Joining us now with more on the report is writer and UFO investigator Mick West. Thanks for joining us, Mick. Glad to be here. Good morning. So uh, the big surprise to me was that there was no official way or standardized reporting system for reporting a UFO until 2019. What have they been doing before then? Well, that's right. Before that, it was largely informal. Uh, I think what people did was they would take whatever the situation was. And if it was a dangerous situation, it would get reported to one channel. If it was something else, it would get reported to another one. A big issue that we had here was that a lot of these reports came from training ranges. And Navy pilots in these training ranges were often reluctant to report these things because they would then have to cancel their exercise. Mm. And often uh, a lot of these things were fairly innocuous looking. There were things like balloons or plastic bags, which were just a little bit too far away to identify. So there's been a really kind of a piecemeal approach. But most of the actual uh, instances in this report have come in the last two years with the new reporting process. And I think that's what's given the, the UFO discussion a little more credibility is that you had these fighter pilots who you presume have a lot of experience and have seen a lot of things. Um, but I wanted you to maybe comment on the concept of misperception. Is, is it possible that even fighter pilots could, could be a victim to uh, misperception? Yeah, that's right. In fact, some research has shown that fighter pilots, pilots in general, are a little bit more prone to misperception when things are not what they expect. Fighter pilots are very highly trained and very skilled at identifying other planes. But when it comes to things that where you can't tell what, sh what the shape actually is, what it represents and how big it is, pilots can actually make mistakes more than the average person because they're so focused in on identifying planes that they might miss something uh, that's a different shape from a plane, like a balloon, for example. So for those who are hoping that we'd get a big, you know, unveiling of a lot of information that, you know, the government had that we didn't know about, there's really not a lot in there. It's nine pages and you don't have any reporting outside of the military, right? What about all the regular people who've seen stuff over the years? Well, a lot of those reports just go into essentially black holes. Uh, there are UFO reporting channels. The FAA had one for a number of years, which actually went to a, a paranormal site that also you reported things like ghosts and whatnot. So I think it's good that there's being a bit more attention paid to these things. But also the problem is if you get tens of thousands of people uh, putting in these reports, and most of them are these things that they've said, like atmospheric clutter and uh, atmospheric effects and things like plastic bags and balloons and birds, then it's very difficult to separate the, the, the actual interesting reports from the noise. So it's a real challenge. Hey Mick, uh, it's my understanding that, that astronomers pretty much have the sky covered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Is that your understanding and, and would it be possible for somebody to sneak in on us? Uh, it would be very difficult because, of course, you know, the, we, we're worried about foreign adversaries sneaking in. So we have a radar covering the entire country. And if something was coming in from outside, we have the ballistic missile defense system, which would detect that as well. So, yes, it would be very difficult for things to sneak in. And it, uh, it doesn't really make sense uh, that something could of this magnitude could actually be something like, say, aliens, for example. That would be something that would require a massive pr response from the government, and that's something we've really not seen. And I think that really indicates that the level of the evidence that we have for these being things like aliens, or you know, more realistically, some kind of foreign technology, really isn't there. And you see that reflected in the report. There's really very little evidence that there's anything beyond mundane objects here, but it's still something we should look into. All right, Mick, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.